A very hearty welcome to my channel, Grow Joyfully. This is Meena here, explaining my joyful journey of uh, doing vermicomposting at home in a tub through a series of videos. In the first video, I gave a general introduction and the requirements for choosing a worm bin. And in my second video, I explained what a bedding is and the ingredients that go into it. I hope you have watched both. In this video, which is the third in the series, I will talk about how to source the worms and uh, the worm species which are appropriate for indoor composting. And I will also show you how we introduce the worms into the bin when we start a new batch. Where do we get the worms from? The very first time alone you may have to buy it or you may get it gifted from somebody who does worm composting. After that, after every harvest, you will use worms already available for the next batch. In fact, once you settle down with the process and follow it diligently, you will see that the worm population is increasing in a big way. And hence, you may scale up adding more worm bins or you in turn may gift to a newbie. I always do that. I make it a point to gift worms after every harvest to someone who wants to get into wormy composting. There are several thousands of species of earthworms all over the world. The most popular species used for home composting is Icena fetida, popularly known as red wigglers. They are typically 2 to 5 inches in length. They have a striped appearance with alternating uh, dark and light color bands. They are rugged and resistant and extremely easy to maintain. They reproduce very quickly. They are not choosy about food items. They stay put in the bin and they adapt to change in surroundings quite rapidly. And they tolerate a wider temperature range, 12 to 24 degree Celsius. Next, I'll talk about two species which thrive in tropical areas like we have in India. The first species is Eudrelis eugenae, popularly called as African night crawlers. Night crawlers receive their name because you usually find them feeding above the ground or the bin at night. There are many kinds of night crawlers, African, European and Canadian. African night crawlers uh, can reach a length of about 8 inches and they are quite muscular. True to their size, they eat a lot more than red worms. And uh, they will thrive in beds which are uh, having temperature in the range of 21 degrees Celsius and 29 degrees Celsius. Next is Perionyx excavators. They are called as blue worms because uh, they have a blue sheen on their skin which is visible in bright light. Blue worms are typically small. They do not grow more than 3 inches. They are even thinner than red worms. And they do best in temperatures between 21 degrees Celsius and 26 degrees Celsius. Both species thrive in tropical conditions. They do not tolerate uh, very low temperatures. And both of them have a propensity to flee their bins. They wander if conditions are not to their liking. So to that extent we can say that they are more fussy than red wigglers and they can be found both in soil and they can also live in a indoor composting bin. As far as possible, I suggest using worms which are locally available at your end, very well adapted to local conditions. I got my first 100 worms 5 years back from Department of Horticulture in Bengaluru where I live. They were a mix of African night crawlers and the Indian blue worms and I have managed to breed them successfully and uh, scale up also. Some people ask me, can I go to a farm in a rural area and uh, get worms? The technique is easy, you put a ball of uh, fresh cow dung in a corner and uh, the worms definitely get attracted to it in a few days. A word of caution here. If they are deep burrowing worms, they can live only in soil and they cannot live in a shallow container that we have at home. So please check uh, before you do this. One more point to take care is to check whether the worms can live only in the composting bin or they can thrive in your containers also. This point is especially relevant for organic terrace gardeners like me. If they can live only in a composting bin like uh, red wigglers, then we may have to sieve the tiny uh, worms as well as the cocoons and put only the castings in the containers. But if they are Indian blue worms or the African night uh, crawlers, 
then uh, they can manage in the containers as well now you can see them they are pretty long they came from my leaf composting bin They don't like light, so they'll try to go inside. So we need to give them a complete covering immediately. That you cover it with some old piece of cloth completely. And it should be wet. So that it provides a very moist and cool ambience for the worms. It's important to ensure that this cloth piece stays moist and cover it with jute or another piece of cloth and tie it like this. We have started a new batch now. For the next one week there is no need to feed the worms at all. They will be very traumatic because it's a new ambience for them. Being summer, every day we take out this jute cloth and simply spray water on the cloth piece that we have put underneath so that the whole ambience is very moist and cool and keep this bin in a cool shady area it should not be exposed to sunlight this is how we start a new batch in vermicomposting when you start a new batch worms have not yet acclimatized to their surroundings they do take some time to settle down in their new home so for the first two days they may try to escape from the bin. So we suggest keeping an overhead light on, a bright light just above the bin. This is a very common uh, worm bin tactic and it works very well because worms will instinctively avoid the light and uh, they will burrow into the bedding. So this is in the night and uh, during the daytime you can keep in a place where there is a lot of reflected light and hence worms do not try to escape. We placed a wet cloth on the surface of the bedding and we need to ensure that uh, it stays moist. So for the first one week, check every day, open the bin and uh, spray some water if required so that the cotton cloth piece remains moist. And as it dries and water evaporates, it will provide a very cool ambience which the worms need. Avoid feeding anything extra in the first week. The worms will not starve. If they are hungry, they are going to eat the bedding. But no extra feeding is required. As a newbie, after introducing the worms, I was always curious to know what was happening inside the bin. I actually felt like being part of the bin or at least open the bin and keep staring at the worms all the way through. But then this is something that we need to curb and we should not be doing at all. Worms are like uh, teenagers, they have their own anxieties, especially in a new bin. They don't want to be disturbed at all. So do not examine the bin unnecessarily, more so in the first week. Also, we may be excited and we may want to open the bin and showcase it to our friends that we have started a new bin. Uh, please do not do that. Uh, you can keep your friends five feet away and uh, just show them this is my bin. That is enough. Please do not open at all. If worms are anxious in their new surroundings, we, especially as a newbie, have our quota of anxieties as well. We need to learn to manage them. I had a lot of anxiety as a newbie and it took me nearly three batches to get rid of these anxieties and start relaxing. So let me share. Have I created the right ambience for the worms? Are they happy with the shelter? Have they settled down? Are they happy with the food that I am giving? Are they eating? And if there are some uh, new uh, babies 
or tiny tots or cocoons that we have put or some juvenile worms are they all growing and once they reach adulthood are they mating with each other right and uh, is the population increasing in general are the worms happy with what i have what i have given and have i done anything wrong these are some of the questions that used to be in my mind all the time when i started the first batch some anxiety is okay but we should not get uh, unduly stressed as i said this is going to be a very joyful journey for us rather i would suggest understand what the worms want give them completely relax and leave them alone and they will also be happy and they will go about doing their job of eating growing mating pooping etc merrily in the next video i will discuss how to start feeding the worms with the green matter once they settle down thank you for watching my video have a great day